Hey y'all doing? Now I'm back in with another video. So I was working on a my draw text script yesterday and I was trying to figure out how to get the uh text to only render on within certain time frames. And I saw a couple of solutions online uh about how to do this, but they kind of seemed overly complicated. And then I happened upon when I was looking through the app of MPEG documentation. I kept seeing this use of this argument in, in the draw text filter called enable. And I, I was looking through it, I was like, I don't see an enable argument here. What, what the hell is this? And apparently, there's this, I guess, a concept that some of the filters can use called timeline editing, which essentially allows you to turn the filter on and off as the video is being processed based on the result of an expression that's evaluated, which it ends up, but which ends up being really useful for what I was trying to figure out. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to show you today. Before we get started, um, if you haven't done so already, uh, go ahead and subscribe down below. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, if you've been enjoying my content, and uh, with that, let me show you the goods. By the way, this is the second time recording. For some reason, the first recording it just it was all jacked up. So um, let's go to the documentation. Okay, so. This has been here the whole time. I just, I just apparently never saw it until recently. So if we see here in the FFmpeg filter documentation, there's a section here called timeline editing. That says some filters support a generic enable option. This is the thing that I kept seeing in the draw text example, and I was like, well, where, where, where is this coming from? Uh, for the filter supporting timeline editing, this option can be set to an expression which is evaluated before sending a frame to the filter. If the evaluation is non-zero, the filter will be enabled. Otherwise, the frame will be sent unchanged to the next filter in the filter graph. Basically, so what this is saying is, whatever this expression is that you have uh, enable set to, if it evaluates to, say, one or two or anything that's not zero, it will basically perform as normal. If it evaluates to zero, it essentially just skips the filter, like it doesn't, it didn't exist for that for the for the uh, that particular frame. Anyway. And you will see when you're evaluating these expressions, there's a couple of constants you can reference. Uh, this is probably the main one you will use if you use this, which is t, which is the timestamp of the frame. Uh, there's also the sequential number of that frame in the entire frame sequence. Uh, I'm not sure what this position in the file of the input frame. I'm not really sure what that means, actually. And then the height and width of the frame. And if you look down here below, here are some examples. So this one will only do the smart blur on the video frames when the timestamp of the frames is between 10 seconds and 3 minutes, so 180 seconds. Uh, and what'll happen is, if say, let's say T is 12. If T is 12, between will evaluate to one for true, which means since this is evaluated to one, which is a non-zero number, the filter will, perform, will, will, will be on for this frame. If say T is four, um, this will evaluate to false and return a zero. And since enable will be zero, it will, just pretend like that filter doesn't exist for the scope of that frame. Um, so I'm going to show you how I use that to uh, achieve the effect that I was going for. Let me go over here and go to uh, draw text. So I added two extra arguments to the script as of now. There is a T start and a T end. These represent the starting timestamp of when I want the text to be displayed and the ending timestamp of when I want the text to be to stop being displayed. Uh, if we go down to the argument list, I believe I called them, yeah, um, TST or text start time and TET -T -T for text end time. Uh, I was trying to do some sanity checking to make sure that like the values made sense. Uh, I, apparently I wasn't doing something right because this wasn't working, but I, I'll, I'll figure that shit out later. It's not super important right now. Uh, you will see that I have added a, whoops, too far. I have added a um, get enabled arg 
to output that enable argument that we saw in the documentation. And what it outputs it depends on the value of the t start and tn variables. Uh, they default to zero. And so if t start is not zero and t end is not zero, um, it does a little sanity check to make sure that like t end is greater than t start because of that otherwise that wouldn't make any sense. If it's not, it just says, hey, you 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 screwed up, bud, and exits. Uh, otherwise, you will see that it echoes that enable argument using the expression between, and it's uh, checking whether the timestamp of the frame is between the starting timestamp and the ending timestamp. Um, if you're wondering why there are backslashes here, it's to escape the comma. Uh, when in the FFmpeg filter document, uh, like a uh, complex filter graph, uh, commonly the comma is used to to delimit the actual each each filter so if you don't escape this it's going to think you meant to start another filter and it's going to be it's going to throw an error saying that that doesn't that doesn't work uh when it because this is what this is actually saying i want this is delimiting the um the expression arguments um so if T start was not zero, but T end is zero, meaning that there was no T end passed. We only care about only showing the text after a certain timestamp. Uh, it'll instead of using between, it'll use greater than. Uh, I should probably actually be using greater than equal to, but eh, uh, the difference is so uh, the the difference is so uh, barely even present that whatever this this works fine anyway. And it's it's basically checking whether t is greater than t start. Uh, if only t end is not zero, uh, then it will use the less than expression to make sure that the timestamp of the frame is less than t end. Uh, when it's not, the text will basically disappear from the video. Um, if neither one of those are set, meaning that there was no arguments passed in, or for whatever reason they were passed into zero anyway, um, it, you see it just outputs enable equals one. Well, since one, enable is just always one, it's just always active. Uh, and you will see I am using that, I believe I stuck it at the very end here. Yeah, so here's my function that just basically spits out the whole uh, draw text filter. And you will see at the very end, I stuck it at the, uh, at the end um, to print out the enable argument. Um, so let's take a look at what this looks like now, now that I have this. Uh, so let me go to, let's see, let me go to, go recording, okay. So if we use draw text, there's some history here from wherever I was messing with this. Uh, so here's an example of where I'm only passing in a starting timestamp. Now we're going to use F, uh, the filter graph flag to get the actual filter generated rather than actually using it. And you will see at the very end here, you will see enable equals greater than T3. Meaning when the timestamp is greater than 3, it will actually enable this filter. Otherwise this, fable, this filter does not. So let's give you let's run it and see what happens. So presumably if this works, the first three seconds you will see no text. After the three seconds, and then from that point on, you will see the text. And it's at the bottom of the screen. So it's going one second, two second, three second. Text is there. Um, I'm not gonna let the whole video play, but you get that. So now let's look at if I only pass in a um, ending argument, so T E T. So in this case, and we'll do the filter graph to see, uh, enable equals less than five. So what will happen here is that the text will render for the first five seconds and then just and then stop rendering. So let it play. So at two, three, four, Five text is gone, 
And the last example would be where you have both. So let's do both. So we have draw text. Okay. And we're going to print filter graph again to see what it looks like. And you will see enable equals between timestamp is between three and eight. And if we run this to see what it looks like, what should happen is the first three seconds, no text. After three seconds, you'll see text. And then after the eighth second, text will go away again. So let it run. Uh, so we're at uh, two seconds, three seconds, there's text, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, I just realized my face is in the way and you didn't see a single thing of that. Let me try that again. Uh, so, starting timestamp. So, three seconds in, there's a text. I, I didn't notice that the first time I recorded this, actually. I, <laughs> now I'm glad I'm re-recording this. So, five, uh, TET, first five seconds, you'll see text, then it goes away. Okay. And then the last example where you have both, uh, you'll only see text between the three seconds and eight seconds. So two, three, there's text, five, six, seven, gone. And there you go. So that's how I use this uh, timeline editing argument to dynamically turn the filter on and off. So if you wanna see what all filters actually do this. If you do ffmpeg dash filters, you'll see there's like a, a a little legend at the top. It says like timeline support, slice threading, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see that any filter down below that has the T means you can use this generic argument. So if we look at draw text, you'll see it has that T next to it, meaning it, it, it you can use the um, the enable option to dynamically turn the filter on and off based on some condition. Um, uh, moving forward, I would, I, I'm going to use that in tandem with dynamically adjusting the, uh, some of the values that you can do with that. This something like, you can use expressions to also change some of the other values, like, um, the alpha for opacity to do like a fade in fade out and the X and Y coordinates to do like a slide in slide out. That's what next time I'm going to try to figure out. Uh, that's all I got for you today. Uh, if you want to follow me on other social media, I got a Twitter link and Discord and some other things down below. Um, if you would like to support the channel, and I would love you so much, there's uh, some links down there below as well to do that. Uh, I'm going to start streaming on Twitch soon as well because uh, there's a game that came out that me and some buddies have been waiting on for a very long time. Uh, called Fancy Star Online 2, even though it makes me use Windows because for some reason they're fucking retarded and they're like, hey, we're gonna put this exclusively on the Windows Store. Eh. You know, the like, uh, the objectively most garbage distribution thing they could have used. Oh, God, dude, please kill me. Uh, so, uh, if, uh, and with that having been said, y'all come on back now and I'll see you next time.